Today I'm gonna talk about an old movie from 1977, which is literally worshipped all throughout the post-Soviet world, having murals and statues in different countries, having won many awards and still being extremely popular to this day. Most of this movie is in Russian, but it's available in very high quality with English subtitles on YouTube and Netflix. Okay, let me give you some setup. The movie stars Valiko, also known as Mimino, which means Falcon in Georgian. Get it? Because he flies. This handsome man is a pilot for a local airline company, working in a small village with his main job being flying stuff between small villages like bags of flour and etc. People are always happy to see him with kids waiting for him because a helicopter landing in your local village where the main entertainment is herding sheep and throwing rocks at other kids is pretty fun. He goes to visit the hat shop that his friend runs where the guy on the poster looks exactly like Mimino. Hats were extremely popular in the USSR which is why today every post-Soviet person is bald-pilled. The Soviet Union was also notoriously corrupt with nepotism deciding everything. In this example there's a shipment of new school desks coming and his friend calls a person on the higher up asking them that his district gets the shipment first. His boss gives him his car because he needs to go to the city City and a cop pulls him over. Mimino tries to use his charisma skills to get the cop off his ass but is forced to hand his driving license over by the cop. And in the next scene you see him get dropped off by a truck with his luggage and he tells his boss and I quote Givi Ivanovich the police here have no respect for you. They took your car and your license. Okay. This is where the real shit hits the fan. You see some guy in an airport loading Dutch chickens in Mimino's helicopter for him to transport. When one guy calls out to him. Mimino! This guy is Mimino's friend from back in the day. They went to flying school together. He says that Delhi won't receive them and that's why they're here and asks what Mimino is doing here. He replies that he's carrying Dutch chicken. Ah hell nah, this man is broke. And then... Two stewardesses pull up. Здрасте. Mommy, I mean mommy, I'm sorry, mommy, I mean ma. His friend introduces Mimino to the girls, saying they went to flying school together. The girl's name is Larisa Ivanovna, and her and Mimino exchange names. She asks if Mimino is his first or last name, and the friend tells her that Mimino means falcon in Georgian. She says, You look it. If you haven't already died from all the sexual tension between the two and are still watching, very good. Personally, Mimino is a better man than me. If Ivanovna had said you look like a falcon to me, my legs would have started shaking and I would start slurring on my words. They say goodbye and his friend goes up to his big ass plane that he flies. At this point, Mimino is thinking, Man, I've got to get this girl. Did anyone else see how bad she was? How did my broke ass end up carrying Dutch chicken when this dude went to the same school as me and instead of Dutch chicken, he's carrying out two Russian baddies around him? I've got to get my racks up. He goes back to his village thinking about this while melancholic Soviet music plays. He goes back to his village carrying flour with his little brother and says hi to a girl, but she doesn't say hi back. He says, why didn't you say hi? And then the girl says hi. You don't want me, do you? Then him and his little brother see her playing a melancholic song on piano and he thinks back to the moment he met Larisa Ivanovna, of the big life. Then you see an elderly woman begging Mimino to fly this cow out to the city because nobody would buy it in this small village and she can't sell it here. Mimino refuses saying, bitch it's a fucking cow how do you expect me to do this and tells her he won't take it to the city. And then this is the next scene. After his boss scolds him because what the fuck he flew a cow with a helicopter, he tells him he wants him to write a reference because he wants to go back to big aviation. The boss gets a little emotional, they've been working together for 8 years and doesn't want him to leave. He asks him if he's really thought about it. He says it's thought about and decided. He starts writing his reference. Mimino is going to Moscow, gives his dad some money and his dad tells him, Valiko. Don't kill him if you see him, please. Times have changed. 
They won't understand. Mimino doesn't say anything and puts his head down. Now you're thinking, what the fuck? Who is Mimino supposed to kill? We don't know either. Maybe we'll find out before the movie ends? Wink wink. His dad and mom are standing outside his helicopter. His dad says he won't come back and they watch as the helicopter lifts off and he leaves. His aunt gives him some contacts to get him a hotel room in Moscow. Some random guy enters leaving a banquet invitation for some Hachikyan and then this happens. <laughs> Mimino gets straight to business, goes straight to dialing Larisa Ivanovna saying he's Valiko from Tbilisi the capital of Georgia. And speaking of Tbilisi, this video is probably copyrighted and not monetized at all. So it would make my day and my wallet if you could cop some merch. These shirts are extremely high quality, both being 100% cotton and are relatively cheap and drippy. The design is of the city of Tbilisi and I think it looks really really good. A lot of people have already copped these shirts and you can get them at kartli.shop. Thank you a lot for listening. Hachikian is an Armenian truck driver from Dilijan, a small town in Armenia, same as Mimino who is Georgian and from Tel Aviv also a small town. He tries to set up a date with Larissa but Hachikian keeps interrupting him with some random stuff while he's trying to make a call. He invites her out to a restaurant and then goes off on Hachikian and they start yelling at each other. Mimino is smoking and he sees a random woman get out of a cab that looks like Larissa Ivanovna but upon closer look it's not her and also she's with some random guy. L. Mimino comes back heartbroken. Man, this Russian girl ditched my ass, I got a whole table in this restaurant and I'm gonna eat all this shit alone. That's it, I'm going on 4chan. He comes back to the banquet and the singers say, this song is for our guest from the sunny city of Tel Aviv and start playing a Georgian song. <laughs> Then Hachikian walks up to the band and pays them off to start playing an Armenian song. Then it cuts to them dancing. Next day, they wake up. Mimino is probably hungover from all the vodka and Hachikian says he wants to get a green alligator toy for his son but they didn't have any here, neither in Yerevan or in Tbilisi. Mimino couldn't care less though as he is now heartbroken because La Larissa ditched him. Hachikian recommends that instead of a restaurant, he offers to take her to a place of culture because she has morals and going to a place of culture is better than going to a restaurant to dance. Because of course, if you invite a girl to a restaurant and not a place of culture and she comes, she's a whore. He then asks her out again to go to the big theater in Moscow and she tells Mimino she'll be there. W. Before going to the date, he hands his paper in for the big aviation application, saying he'll get the answer tomorrow. Being very confident and saying to his friend on the phone, sure they'll take me, you know what they said? Pilots like you are hard to come by and to say hi to everyone back home. Back home, Hachikian announces that he got a new really cool truck so they start celebrating by dancing. But then some guy comes in saying, the likes of you are a disgrace to the republic. I am Hachikian. Turns out this hotel room was reserved for another Hachikian who was an endocrinologist and they thought he was faking, so they get kicked out of the hotel room. Now they're outside, freezing, two broke dudes in Moscow, outside of the big theater, freezing their asses off. Hajigan's plan is to drive back to Armenia and he'll be home in three days. He would go to the bathhouse and soak in hot water instead of being in this Antarctica level Moscow cold. He asks Hachikian for some coins and he calls Larisa Ivanovna. But oh no, what's this? Two little girls pick up instead of Larissa saying, is this the Mimino who was loading chickens? You know what Mimino? Just get lost and they hang up the phone.
so they go to the theater together. Mimino's heart is just demolished at this point. He got ditched not once, but twice. And turns out it's not even because Larissa didn't want him, but because her little sisters were being assholes and were playing a prank on Mimino. They sleep in the truck, Hachikian wakes Mimino up, and Mimino says, are we being evicted again? No. I'm in charge of this hotel. The relationship developing between them is actually so nice to see. From yelling at each other in the hotel room to now having nice dialogues on Hachikian's truck. Mimino wants Hachikian to stay till tomorrow so they could see more sights. The writing of their dialogue is very very good. It makes them feel like actual humans instead of most movies where the writing makes them talk like NPCs. Hachikian says goodbye to Mimino and drops him off at the aviation center. He starts to drive off but stops and comes out with a wheel telling Mimino to sell it because he doesn't have any money and neither does him. He says he can accept it but after thinking about it for half a second he says how will I even sell it? Who to? So they literally go to some random cars to see whose tires are worn out. Hachikan asks one of the people nearby whose car this is and they give him the apartment number. A woman opens the door and Hachikan tells her Want a tire at half price? She calls out her husband and he comes out. Upon seeing who comes out, Mimino's face completely changes and he says hello Nugzar. Nugzar tells him to wait a second and rushes to lock the door to keep Mimino out. Mimino gets in and says don't you know how to say hello boy? Nugzar says hello and immediately runs into the bathroom and locks himself in yelling call the police Toshia he's going to kill me. Ah. So this is what his dad was talking about. I really like how characters actually feel like people in this movie and they talk like people as well instead of just saying cringy one-liners. Mimino could have easily said you scared fuck boy or something to Nugzar but he just went in with why don't you say hello boy. Next scene is Mimino being escorted by the police to a room with his lawyer. His lawyer is a young girl with this being her first actual case. She told Mimino he has the right to ask for a more experienced lawyer but he declined saying that she'll do just fine. She asks if there had been any animosity between Mimino and Nugzar before which he declines. She asks why Mimino assaulted him. He didn't touch him, he locked himself in the toilet. She also asks why he smashed the chandelier and he says because Nugzar is a rat. Okay, so you deny there being any animosity between you two, yet he locks himself in the bathroom upon seeing you and then you smash his chandelier. The lawyer, upon realizing that she's dealing with a fucking menace, tells Mimino that his acts are qualified as destructive vandalism, which is punishable with up to 6 years in jail. But if there had been any personal animosity beforehand, it would only be classified as a misdemeanor and only be punishable for between 6 months and a year. He still says there wasn't any animosity between them. Men smoking. I can't handle this dude anymore. Nugzar arrives to court and before he enters, Hachikian is standing there. He tells him in a very friendly way to say it was just a joke and why ruin a man. The woman with Nugzar tells him that a Venetian glass chandelier that Mimino broke costs 3000 rubles which would be worth around 2000 dollars today. Whereas for today 3000 rubles is worth less than my gym membership. Hachikian tells them he swears he would pay them in 3 years time. But they basically tell him to fuck off and court starts. Nugzar makes a bullshit speech about how he's ashamed to be from the same country that Mimino is from because of his actions and that he barged into his home, beat him up viciously and smashed the Venetian glass chandelier. Mimino stays quiet but his lawyer has a question for Nugzar. If he got beat up so viciously, why did he see a doctor next week and not the next day? Hmm, you were busy? Okay. Why did you go to another district's doctor instead of your own? Hey, come on, what's the, what's the difference? They ask him if the defendant was known to him. He looks over at Mimino and says no. Then one of the court people has a question for Mimino. You seem like a normal person, yet you barge into a home, chase the man and smash the furnishings. You must have had a reason. And Mimino says no. At this point it's obvious that Mimino held a grudge against him but he doesn't say what. Even to the point where he is lying in court and he could get sentenced to 6 years in jail instead of 6 months but still doesn't say what it was. They request the judge a 2 year imprisonment for him. Hachikian gets devastated. Why, mama, she
Then Better Call Saul stands up. She sent an inquiry to the police department of Mimino's town and got the reply. Turns out they had a fight in a restaurant where upon Mimino laying his eyes on Nugzar started chasing him. Nugzar hid in the men's bathroom where Mimino broke in and dumped his head into the toilet bowl four times. <laughs> Mimino refused to elaborate to the police about the situation, but his sister told everyone the truth. Turns out, Nugzar was Mimino's sister's boss and Nugzar promised to marry her. So she became his mistress, but he lied. He did not marry her or anything, he literally just fucked her and left. And the year after that she gave birth to a child, Nugzar's child which of course he doesn't take care of. Okay, Nugzar deserved to get his ass beat and Mimino did not want to say why because he thought it would embarrass his sister. Bro is an actual saint. And also, that Venetian glass chandelier? Bullshit. It's manufactured in some city in Russia and sold for literally 37 rubles instead of 3000 that Nugzar claimed. My god, she did it. Mimino was a free man with a 50 ruble fine and the cost of the chandelier. At this point Mimino had gave up. He was detained in jail for a few days, Larissa Ivanovna ditched him and told him to fuck off, so they both took the L and are driving back to Tbilisi. Hachikian explains to him that Larissa sees astronauts and movie actors every day because she's a stewardess on an international airline, so she wouldn't be that impressed with Mimino. Mimino reminisces about his old village, thinks a bit and tells Hachikian to stop the car. He says he's not going back and thanks Hachikian for everything he's done for him. He gets out the car and Hachikian gives him a tire and gets back in the truck. Mimino goes into the aviation center but he gets told to fuck off because the age limit for applying for retraining is 35 and he turned 35 three days ago when he was in jail. So he literally can't be an international pilot now because of the age limit. L. Back to Tbilisi I guess. There's also a funny scene where he tries to sell two soldiers his watch claiming that it's shock resistant drops the watch to prove it's shock resistant and it stops working. Another one where he asks how much a coffee is and they say 11 kopecks and 6 for tea and he'll take the tea because he's broke. He tells the cashier to keep the change but she replies with you keep it because he clearly needs it more. He sits down to drink and sees a homeless looking man staring at him. Then he asks him what his name is and the homeless guy tells Mimino his last name correctly and asks if his dad died in the war. Turns out this homeless looking guy Ivan Volokhov was in the war with Mimino's dad and recognized him because he looks like him. Mimino smiles because he just met his dad's war buddy and shamingly asks if he could lend him 37 rubles. The price for Tbilisi Moscow flights back in the USSR. Volokhov, seeing that this poor man is down bad, asks him what happened and takes him to a military center of some sort. By the talking, you can hear that Volokhov has some clout there. People were impressed to see him in the flesh and he also walked right in to see the boss without a booking or anything. Mimino gets asked to come in and they can't help but smile because Mimino looks like their war buddy so much. They say he's the spitting image of Vasily and Mimino thinks who the fuck is Vasily? My dad's name was Konstantin and they talk about it. Volokhov says that him and his dad were in the same tank for three years and he would have not mistook his name. Mimino realizes what's up and says his dad was an infantryman. They got the wrong guy. Turns out it was just another guy with Mimino's last name that they mistook him for. Mimino gets embarrassed and starts to leave. But the boss calls out to him. Young man! And this is the next scene. My boy made it. You see him flying this big ass USSR plane and him interacting with his crewmates. In the next scene, you also see Hachikian in Mimino's hometown driving and asking where the airport is so he could find Mimino's address and write to him. He says he's looking for a Georgian friend of his. I'll write him hello Valiko and he'll say how'd you find me. It will make him feel good and that will make me feel good too. Mimino is in a foreign country now and asks his crewmate to go into town with him to see the sights. But he declines because he's already seen the sights a thousand times. You see him in a cab in Amsterdam smoking a cigar and exploring the city. <laughs> Who 
When Mimino speaks English, it's astonishing how much he sounds like Borat and even looks like him too. Good day. Добрый день. Good day. Добрый день. And do you speak English? Вы говорите yes, по-английски? A little bit. Немного. I want green. Я хочу зеленый. Uh, uh, what? Что? Крокодил. Oh, a crocodile. Yes. Uh, good day, this is very silly phone here. If you remember, Hachikian wanted to get his son a green crocodile toy, but he couldn't find it anywhere, so Mimino bought it for him in Amsterdam. There's also a very funny scene here, where Mimino wants to call to Dilijan to Hachikian, but they tell him it's not available, so he calls to his hometown, Tel Aviv. He starts speaking to the guy in Georgian there, but turns out, instead of Tel Aviv, Georgia, it's Tel Aviv, Israel. The Georgian guy in Israel asks about things back home, and asks Mimino to sing together, where he starts crying. He's exploring the city and walking back to the airport and someone yells out Mimino! And look who it is. Larissa Ivanovna tells Mimino that it was a misunderstanding and it was her kid sister playing pranks on him and to please not be angry. She tells him to call her when he's in Moscow and Mimino says he will. Let's fucking go! So it turns out Ivanovna wasn't being an asshole. Mimino goes to fly the plane and tries to open the bottle by smashing it on the counter. The stewardess tells him that there's an opener and he fucking bursts. He yells at the girl, Will you stop telling me what to do? I'm not a little boy. The girl, of course, surprised by this autistic guy yelling at her, asks him, Why are you shouting at me? When did I ever tell you what to do? Mimino, realizing that he's a dumbass, tells Katja to forgive him and that he didn't mean it. What should I do to make this up? Want me to jump off the plane? No, I don't. And he replies, I want to. And this is the next scene. Mimino went back to his town after experiencing big aviation and hating his life during it. He achieved his dream, but it didn't make him happy at all. On the contrary, it made him pissed off all the time. He went back to his family and his town. Mimino had everything he wanted in the end. He was in big aviation and he had a bad Russian girl waiting for him. But in the end, he thought about it and went, yeah. Georgian girls are better either way. Gamma sendebi da vets kleba, sin hedelian.